Where can you find neon lights better than those in Las Vegas? Well, right here in Great Falls, of course. We'll explain coming up on this episode of We're No Damn Experts. Best damn podcast, the best damn town. You want to get up, get ready to get down. Welcome to the greatest damn town in Montana, Great Falls. I'm Rebecca Ingham. I'm Shannon Newth. And, and we're, we're no, no damn, damn experts. experts. I'm pretty stoked for the whatever you came up with for this podcast episode, oh. first and foremost. <laughs> Second, I keep wanting to equate it to an exhibit that happens in Las Vegas. Oh. But it is mm. not because I've now looked through the book and we're not even it's a hundred percent better than what happens mm. in Vegas. So Shannon you heard that. Great Falls, a hundred percent better than Vegas. There you go. <laughs> and you can talk about it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> After you've been that's, here. That's true. It doesn't have to stay in Vegas. That's right. <laughs> so Shannon, who's here in the studio with us? Yes, we have lovely return guests, Nicole and Sarah from Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art. Last time we can say those uh names together. Woo woo. Or at least your name. This is yeah. um, <laughs> Sarah least, Justices, yeah. <laughs> who is the executive director for the Paris Gibson Squares. Mm-hmm. Last time on our podcast yeah. as the executive director of the square. Yeah. But Nicole mm-hmm. will stay with us yeah. for eternity. Until That's right. You're going to be back ever. many a time. <laughs> many a time you're going to come back. Yes. So <laughs> let's kick it off since our, our listeners just know exactly who you are. Let's dig <laughs> in quickly to this new exhibit. Yeah. Name of it. Where the inspiration came from. The and one all, that's better than Vegas. Yeah. Better yeah. than Vegas. And the that's reason be I the say name of this that. Episode. Yeah. Might as well be. Better than Vegas. Um, and I'll tell you why after someone shares with us about this <laughs> exhibit, where it came from, what what it is, yeah, all that sounds stuff. good. Yes. So we are lucky enough to be part of this touring exhibition that originated at the Missoula Art Museum. Oh, okay. okay. So it's um, quite a privilege for institutions to be part of a cycle of touring exhibitions. And we are on the last leg of that tour. So we are kind of the big finale of the exhibition. Ooh. Ooh. Exactly. So that is a number one reason to come to Great yeah. Falls to experience Willem Volker's exhibit. So this is the last time it can be seen. Exactly. Oh. Grand finale. Okay. Yeah. Like you said, even more reason. Exactly. And um, so Willem Volker's is an artist that... Um, um, has been working with neon, mm. basically, and mixed media works for a really long time. And he has been a professor here in Montana since 1986. Oh, long time guy. Yes, it's 1986. Year, just saying. And actually, he had his very first museum exhibition at Paris Gibson Square Museum oh, of Art in 1988. Awesome. Full circle Holy moment. Moly. Was I it a know. neon exhibit? It was a neon <gasps> exhibit. Cool. So this dude, what is he a professor of? Science? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is a professor of magic. No, <laughs> he's a professor <laughs> of art, of fine art. Mm. Oh, okay. Yes. So he does sculpture and um, he mixed professor, media work. Nicole. It's um, Bozeman. In, in Bozeman. Okay. Mm-hmm. The good school. Montana State. Yes. Is he yeah. currently yeah. teaching? He's no, retired. he is retired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He is retired and he is loving his life. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is just his freedom. He is just making art. In fact, he texts me pictures or sends me images of new art that he's making right now, getting mm-hmm. prepared for another exhibition of different of a different thematic. But this is a 25-year retrospective of his work. Wow. Yeah. And so it's a really important exhibition. And the title is very interesting because it's called The View From Here. Mm. Okay. You know, and so we're talking about perspectives. I like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about an an individual who immigrated into the United States Mm. from Holland post-World War II. So he lived there during Nazi occupation. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yes. And so he's in his 80s. Oh my and goodness. Um, he has his work really is about perspective, about the experience of living the American dream mm. when you come to the United States and what that looked like to him mm. as a child, as a teen, 
as an adult growing through life phases and all the amazing things that encompass um, what is the United States, mm. including a perspective that he left behind when um, the destructive period of World War II was happening for him. So he does this, and I'm going to say it this way, not to minimize it, but he does it with neon signs. Yeah, I was I, like, yes. he, he's custom making neon things, mm -hmm. yes. but it's basically a neon sign. Right. I would yeah. never, when I'm thinking about that story you just, you just yes. told, my mental image does not go to neon as the medium right. in which that story is told. So I'm fascinated because I think, you know, neon is kind of associated with, you know, fun, Vegas, like shiny, Vegas. like all of yes. these things. Who has the neon museum, which yeah. is not going to hold a yes. candle. No, so I'm and just so fascinated. This. And he has yeah. done consulting with that institution and okay. other oh, oh, large oh, neon oh. museums, um, yeah. exhibitions as well. But really, if you want to think about it in a very... Uh, easy way to bring it back to Great Falls is that mm. it's electricity. Mm. Oh, and electricity and is part city, of that. the American dream. Mm. It's true. You know, what did it bring to our communities? And and it was a way of bringing people in. Mm. Route 66, you know, come in, experience what we have to offer. Diners, souvenirs, national parks, state mm. parks, you know. It's um, flashy. Yes. You know, when the, people the, think of America, right. they probably, that's yeah, what they that's probably have true. a vision of. Mm -hmm. Well, and I always equate it to open signs. Like, yeah. that's kind of your first entry into <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. neon. You're right. Is. That's true. <laughs> open. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> open signs then, or like <laughs> entrances to cities like, you know, yeah. Vegas, like the welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. just kind of a way to, neon's always been a way to kind of an, put an exclamation point on something, I think, because yeah. it, it always goes, in my experience, the neon has always gone over the top of something that already exists. So like the letters yes. are there, but then the mm. neon outlines it, if you will. And it's not an outline, people, but I, I you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't see what my hands are doing uh -huh. on the podcast. So you're going to have to go Tina with me on this. You know, but when you say, you. Rebecca, ne um, outline, you know, so you, what you're going to see in this body of work is, mm -hmm. is mixed media. Mm. Yes. So there's large scale paintings with neon oh. either on it or in addition mm -hmm. to and artistically he has created outlines yes. of shapes of people hmm. of hats but what, I mean, yes when mm -hmm. i'm looking through that book what i think is really interesting to to add to that is is it doesn't exclamate any one thing it's an addition so it's an outline but not of something that already exists in the exhibit it's an addition to the exhibit it, yeah it's mm -hmm. accentuating you yes. know his concept his idea mm -hmm. and that's what's so interesting about right. art is how these artists come together it's not just it's not just a painting it's no a, you know it's a painting yeah. with 3d mm -hmm. added to it in a way yeah. you know and all the things that he's built and nicole can share a little bit more but he's a master craftsman oh yes you know, everything so everything in, is built by him yes so oh, wow impressive. except for the knickknacks okay yes. those were collected as oh. souvenirs and Bought on eBay, as he'll tell you. Oh. I bought them on eBay. <laughs> I just recently made an eBay purchase that is ridiculous. And I, <laughs> I'm i telling you, I don't know why I'm doing this. And I was talking with my mother about this. Let me just in, I was in like, on Are this you going to share story. what yeah. it is? <laughs> so in the 1990s, when I was a beautiful young teenager in high school, my parents would buy Mary Kay face care and makeup for me. Um, so I could look pretty at school. Well, in the nineties, <laughs> I had this really nice compact and I don't know why all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, that was a really nice compact. Like it hold a little <laughs> lipstick in it and two eyeshadows and a blush. And it was just perfect. And I'm like, I wonder if you can find those. So I found it on eBay, bought it for $2. And I'm like, what am I doing? What am I going <laughs> to do with this? And I was like my mom and she's like, Huh, yeah, I don't know. Go with <laughs> the tub of 1990s clothing you still have in your shed. And I'm like, I guess maybe I'm just waiting to create an exhibit of my life. And this will be the go. 1990s with my makeup palette. <laughs> so now my I've been messaging back and forth with my mom to try and figure out 
what were the names of the color of the lipstick that I wore and what are the names of the color? Like, this is ridiculous yeah. that I'm devoting any amount of time to this, but I appreciate a, a good eBay yeah. sleuth, mm-hmm. obviously, but right. he has intent. I, I don't, well, I don't know why I'm doing actually this. Actually, the, 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 what you're really describing is kind of having this memory of a time period um, that brought you joy and you wanted to recreate it by bringing it back into your <laughs> life you and creating like you know who knows maybe at home you have mm-hmm. like a diorama <laughs> of all your makeup there you go <laughs> yeah it's gonna display. be part of my exhibit <laughs> It'll go with your my shoe house. display yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> but it definitely ties right into what he's doing i yeah. mean there it's like a um it's like an auto a visual autobiography it mm. is a storytelling event um and so collecting all of these things, whatever we do, we collect, we buy, we experience ourselves as, you know, part of this world and part of the United States is through commodity culture, right? Mm. Yep. And so he does tie that into his work. Mm. So you're right you're right there with him now you just put neon around your compact. (laughs) Well you gotta go talk to him. Based on the one picture that spoke most to me, because that's when I'm like, oh, this is going to be a really interesting exhibit is um, the child, the neon outlined child standing in front of a piece of art that is being created. And I'm like, oh, it's adding to that. So in my exhibit, I will just have a neon me putting on makeup using the compact. I love it. There you go. <laughs> Do it. That's fantastic. Or maybe it could be the neon mirror because that yeah. would make a little more you sense. Just, yeah, you could do it as a mirror. And then mm-hmm. I can do a cutout of myself. You can do when you open the compact, there's neon. Yeah. Yeah. This is you need to do a paint by number of yourself. <laughs> oh. Yes. Because yes. you're going to tell that. Them, this, Sarah. He collected... Well, Nicole knows more the history of where these paint by numbers came from, but all the paintings are blown up versions of paint by numbers, old paint by numbers. They're beautiful. Oh my god! Absolutely gosh. beautiful. And so he would project these images mm-hmm. up onto these large scale panels that he built, and he painted those. So that's the style that you're seeing in the majority. So he of would the work. take like the paint by numbers t- toy that you got. Can project what it is on paint by numbers. Oh, you don't. Okay, uh, yeah, paint by numbers. <laughs> oh, a, Sarah well, got concerned I know real she quick. Did get concerned. <laughs> All of us are really concerned right now. Like you've never had a paint, paint by, by number kit. Okay. Yeah. Well, well paint maybe. by numbers. Explain to me what well, it basically, is. I mean, there are companies you can still purchase them today. Yes. Where kids, you know, let's just say it's you're like, I paper. don't have any. Okay. You know artistic talent i don't know That's how to do true, this but <laughs> here's this beautiful picture and yes. it comes to you oh, and the paint comes you. with it and mm. it tells you what color to paint where the picture okay. is outlined okay and yeah. in that outline it has numbers so all Which the color sevens to put where you got to put in yellow okay Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it'll be like okay. an outline yeah. of a flower, and then <laughs> they you still paint do it, it today. Okay. I mean, there's books you can purchase with all of that. Yes, I mean, but maybe that's exactly. what I should do as my own introduction oh, to. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and that's mm-hmm. fun. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, my parents just never were like, "No, that is not her skills. So we're not going down that road." <laughs> <laughs> maybe they didn't like mess because it can get messy. Well, that that could be true. Huh. Maybe I had one and I just don't recall. But some hey, days anyway, are so folks, honestly, <laughs> if you have never heard of a paint by numbers, I want to see there's if Shannon's be, the oddity. There's got to be <laughs> send us an email out there who didn't information know. at visitgreatfonts.org if you also <laughs> have just learned about paint by numbers today. Yeah. <laughs> you know Please. what? I was I was like I'm gonna feel stupid, but somebody no. out there maybe didn't know too. <laughs> oh, no. I appreciate it. <laughs> you're not alone. I'm sure you're not I alone. I think you are, but <laughs> we're gonna find out. Uh, okay, so. Anyway, now that we've explained paint by numbers, go back to their like more conceptual so he, conversation. He basically about like this. bought the paint by numbers, and instead of doing it on the sheet of paper, he projected it onto canvas and then painted it. Yeah, larger scale right. on yes. huh. wood and these are, panel. Board, yeah, so they're, they're not vintage. canvas. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Cool. So they're vintage paint by numbers. I gotta know. Did he follow the numbers? Like, did he say, "Oh, seven is yellow," or did he say? I know all the sevens are the same, but I want them to be green. Or like an ombre look. That's it would surprise me that he question. potentially made his own color palette yes. is my guess. Yes. But I don't know. We've not asked. Yeah. Not asked that. Yeah. No. I mean, I'm just based on what I've seen. The, there are images that are repeated. 
Oh, like okay. there is mm. scenery and landscapes and animals from that same landscape that are repeated throughout the exhibit in oh. different forms and formats and, and backgrounds scale. and different mm. scales. So you'll have a Ooh. miniature and then you'll have a giant like eight foot panel of well, the same paint by number. Wow. Yeah. So are we the doing a reception do with him? Is do like people, people get to meet him in person. Yes. Oh, I've already got yes. my question. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. watch out for her. She's going to tie him up for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's really neat is you get, so October 25th October is the 25th. artist reception. He'll be there and talking about his work with Nicole. And that's at 5.30. 5.30. And that's mm -hmm. on a Friday. It is oh, a Friday. Perfect. And on yeah. Saturday, October 26th, he's giving a free community workshop. There will not there be a neon and you know, Aww. he won't be teaching me on, but he'll be <laughs> helping people think more along the lines of storytelling and narrative within their work. Yes, mm. how to storytell through mm. your visual work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's limited or seating, music. so if somebody's okay. really interested in, like, being able to have some one-on-one -on -one time with him and This learn from sounds him. like the, a blast weekend in Great Falls. It really does. Yes. I want to go see the I yeah. will be Marketing. in town. <gasps> oh, come. She's I hope be you there. do. She's I wish you could have <laughs> seen yes. the whole process. I mean, the installation yeah. process, yes. Nicole, was intense. And we yeah. have to give a shout out to Natalie Woodson mm -hmm. for being an outstanding preparator in my department mm -hmm. and going above and beyond to make everything look like nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> there were how many crates, side. Nicole? About forty-five crates. Oh my goodness! Holy yes. moly! Yeah, Large so crates. How do you? How do you? The neon. Yeah. Do you have enough? I've got outlets? so many questions or like, how here. Do you, we yeah. had to. We yes. had to create outlets. Well, we have outlets, outlets <laughs> but we have to wire and not wire, but let's say cableize everything. <laughs> okay. Yes. My question stems from the fact that this is a traveling exhibit, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna divert for a story real quick to relate to the listeners and then I'll be back. Um, in college, I worked at Northern Reflections. The store no longer exists in the state. It states that it is a Canadian based company. All of this is just information I have that I'm sharing that nobody really needs to know in relation to this story. However, every week we would get diagrams of the way the front of the store needed to look. And it would oh. tell me what, shirts and sweatshirts and pants would go on display so that every store looked the same. So I learned a lot in retail. Mm -hmm. So with a tra now we're coming back with yeah. a traveling <laughs> exhibit, does that come with a sheet of paper of this is the way it needs to be set up or no. this is what goes together or create one, two and three are part of this. And the, what you get are um, crates that are numbered with, t with the names of the piece and the crates, c you just, you know, whenever you're putting it together, you just push, put them together and you open them, all those pieces correspond to the same work of art. But in terms of like how it should look when you display it, where it should be, that's up to the curator's decision. Oh. So you, each one of the institutions that carry the exhibit exhibits it to the best way for their institutional space and the story that they create with the works oh, that's in the pretty space. unique so even if you have seen the exhibit in another place it's not likely to look the way it would look here no even though it's the same pieces of art right exactly. so it's a new exhibit that's really every, at every oh, institution yeah. mm -hmm. in a way yes, yes. Mm -hmm. which i think is really unique and maybe it's designed to be this way when we're talking about perspective, it's a whole full circle mm -hmm. on perspective mm -hmm. because then it, your perspective is then added into that as the curator of the way you think the story needs to be interpreted based mm -hmm. on it's your true. own past and perspective. Oh, mm -hmm. how <laughs> deep is this? Girl? Could you bring it all together? <laughs> I feel so fancy and smart <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious for the two of you when you first saw his work, because obviously at the square, it's you get all different kinds of mediums, all different kinds of work. Um, this seems a little more there's not as many people, I would think, that work in neon as a medium. Mm -hmm. What were kind of both of your impressions the first time you saw his work and now that it's up at the square, that whole process? What are your impressions of uh, like your your view of it, um, like how you interpret from a trained eye mm -hmm. that is artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to start, Nicole? You want me to? <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. Of 
take you back. I'll be honest. The first time I saw his work was in our own collection because we mm. co- we have a f- couple of his pieces in our he collection. Because he first exhibited yes. here, yeah. Yeah. which is so cool. But the thing is, I didn't really know much about him, you know. Um, and so what I did is I saw these pieces and I thought to myself, these are amazing. And then I realized how complicated they were. <laughs> and I also didn't want to plug them in and blow them up. <laughs> so there was a whole thing with the collections care. And I just really looked at it as an object at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just kind of digging into more about um, who he was. But really the point of impact in terms of um, the way I think it affects the viewer and the story. And like, as an art historian, I have a lot of storytelling in my head all the time. <laughs> uh, um, was to see it for the first time it was exhibited and to see um, how wonderful the pieces worked together and the draw that it had for every person who came to visit to um, get something out of the work that related to their own personal life and history. Mm. So I think for me, that's the biggest draw that I see from it. And I usually do in art is when I think about the way it reflects upon our society and how visually amazing it is just because it is, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's composition and, and, the um, ability and skill that's also needed for it. Mm -hmm. That's my perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, you know, more of an art historian's perspective, (laughs) you know, but as a visual artist myself, without diving in at all to the content of the work, Mm -hmm. my initial um, response when I see it, I mean, it's exciting to me. Uh, Of course, just neon is fun to see. It's Mm -hmm. vibrant. Um, it glows, but the way he, his shapes, the way yeah. he's rendered the figure mm-hmm. or whatever it is he's, he's drawing an outline of, I'm impressed by that. Mm-hmm. That's most interesting to me as an artist because I've never worked with neon. What's that <laughs> like? Yeah. What, you know, it's blown glass that's bent. Right. In and you're shapes. bending it into mm-hmm. 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 that's my assumption it's blown i don't even I didn't know even think about that part i was like oh mm-hmm. it's blown glass huh. i'm okay. thinking yeah. it is i don't they're, know if yeah, that's how tubes that are be- bent with heat yeah okay mm-hmm. so let's just yes. say they're tubes already then mm-hmm. then he's creating these shapes out and of them which i know is not easy mm-hmm. yeah. guarantee you there were some breakage and, <laughs> and you know trial and error with it <clears> yeah know? and a lot of collaboration because he does also work with neon masters so like he he has yeah. friends that are have work with him. What a job to title. do that! <laughs> and he probably you know had the designs and then yes collaborated. Mm-hmm. Whether he's the one bending it or did they bend it? Yeah, I don't know. So um, it is. That was my big question. It is real neon. It's not the fake neon today. Uh, correct. LED lights inside of a yeah plastic mm-hmm. yeah. tube. Oh. Yeah. And there's also one gallery in the Mungus Gallery. Mm-hmm. That to me is almost most profound in the sense of the imagery. You know, it's um, war images. Yes. And, mm. Uh, mm. you know, so it makes you have, you feel, you feel the pain. Mm-hmm. You feel the what people go through. So mm. I'm impressed. And I can tell those weren't necessarily paint by numbers. He yes. created his own paint by number yeah. <laughs> in a way for those, those, or used photographs, maybe historic mm. photographs Definitely. that then he blew up and then, and then painted it in a similar fashion. Style. Exactly. Yeah. And so huh. I, uh, I'm drawn to those a lot because I like artwork that um, does evoke emotion and not always the good kind. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm a feeling person, so I'd rather have somebody feel, you know, a sadness or something because there's beauty in that yep. and understanding and empathy I from think, the viewer mm-hmm. with it. For me, those kind of pieces of art, I fell in love with a piece of artwork that was about wartime. And I think it's such a weird juxtaposition to sit in front of a piece of art, which is beauty in essence, that depicts something that's just an awful Mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. And so you just sit there with that and it's like you're battling inside because like, am I supposed to like this? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Am I supposed to be drawn to this in a way that makes me want to put it on my wall at Hmm. home or be in the presence of this piece of work because it's a it's artwork it's pretty it's it's interesting and then you're like but it's about awful things Mm. nobody creates art necessarily a beautiful oil painting of a murder you know (laughs) well Well, there are some (laughs) 
<laughs> there are plenty of those. <laughs> like, well, actually, we have that. Here's my uh, uh, murder scene photo <laughs> artwork. That's okay. Pretty much, you know, yes. I mean, people often purchase artwork to match the furniture. Or, you know, you know, yeah. this, yeah. this whole interior design aesthetic that we have or we assume is the way to do it. Which but is okay. It, that, and there's nothing wrong with that, too. Yes. Uh, but it Not is nice every that, now and then <laughs> to throw in something that yeah. people are taken back by. Uh, did you ever think we'd be talking about murder art? Uh, <laughs> murder, <laughs> murder art when you when came, was, in, for when this, you came yeah. in for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you when it co- your statement on um, home decor and artwork. The we pick out artwork that moves us, and then we're like, mm-hmm. where we, where does this go in the mm-hmm. house? So we've got cathedrals right next to elk, right next to barns, and it's like, oh, that all makes us happy. So that's where I struggle. I'm like, I like so many different kind of styles, and some of them in my head can live together, and others, I'm like, well. <laughs> How do I bring this all together it's in one space? It's being eclectic. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't have yeah. to match at all. Yeah. yeah. Have you That's guys done the Martinsdale Museum home tour as we were talking about home decor? Um, so this is in Martinsdale. It is the Bear family home, and they've got a beautiful little art museum attached to it. But they were collectors of art, which I always find interesting because it's not art. I mean, it's like art you'd buy because you think it's going to appreciate in value, but none of it really goes together. So you've got like these right. florals and the bowl of fruit. And then you've got like people walking on a rainy street in Paris. And I'm like, mm. how does any of this go together? But they just collected right. art from artists they loved. Mm-hmm. And then they put it in their home, which has just non complimentary patterns of <laughs> furniture and curtains and the wildest color like pattern carpets and, and great. rugs and cool. like a, a green, like very rich golf course green <laughs> rug inside of this room where you've just, it's such an interesting experience. So if you're ever in the area, Martinsdale. Where is Martinsdale. this? Is it in Montana? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's oh just south of here. Um, if you Helena were to take area. Highway 89 over the mountain. Okay. Through... Uh, Kings Hill Scenic Byway, and then where the road f- um, tees, you're going to come to a stop sign, and you're going to either have to take a left or a right. Take a left, and that takes you to Martinsdale. Oh. Huh. And then in that Sounds town, like which has, I think, a population of 30, I apologize, <laughs> Martinsdale, if you have more or less than that. But the family estate is there, connected to a state-of-the-art museum, which mm. currently has on display a Robert Osborne exhibit which I loved um, so I'm done talking about this because we're not here to talk about that museum but I would it's recommend okay. doing that yeah. tour just to see the the craziness of patterns I love um, it. of yeah. things Fabulous. that were happening mm-hmm. so you just sh- you just make your house what you love yep. yeah and that's I believe that's what they did mm-hmm. and don't worry about what yes. anyone uh-huh. else says about if, it if it connects no. if it doesn't connect and it's just in the prairie of Montana so, I've so. also come with the house we have. I've come to this realization of like, I'm going to stop trying to make it something it's not. <laughs> like oh. the, the <laughs> themes and the colors of the house. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to redo all of the, you know, board and the, the whatever it's called that goes around the door. Trim, trim, thank yeah. you. I'm like, okay, so rather than trying to make it this whole other theme, just lean into what this is. Like, let that go. Like, <laughs> let it be what it is and lean into that. And yeah. That's, that's it hasn't good. gone that's so Maybe you're just seeing yourself for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's She's deep. deep. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole this was going to turn bring into it a up. therapy <laughs> session here. I like it. We're going to give you a paint by numbers. So <laughs> <laughs> really we'll dig into your feelings. See what I do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Maybe that could be a class idea or a, a workshop idea, yeah, like yeah. paint by numbers, and then you have you an- analyze what that means about your life. Oh, <laughs> so good so mm-hmm. let's get That's back fun. to this exhibit that <laughs> is now open. Yes, How yes. long do people have to enjoy this exhibit? They have until the end of January. Oh, oh wonderful. So Perfect. A little bit of time, but not a whole bunch. Mm-hmm. And if you think it's a lot of time, it's not. It isn't. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> So, no. and I really trip. recommend, and I can't encourage the Great Falls community enough 
to come to the openings receptions yes. to meet the artist. Yeah. This is their one chance to meet him, and he yes. is of an older generation. Mm -hmm. This is your one time, and he's made a big impact in the state of Montana. Well, just the opportunity to ask the questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if you can get into see the exhibit beforehand, mm -hmm. yeah. you're going to have questions. You're going to want to know stuff. And this is the opportunity to just corner him and say, <laughs> hi, I'm friendly. I'd like to discuss some <laughs> things about what I've seen here today. I have to be like, ideas. nice to meet you, friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like, hey, well. <laughs> oh, you're going to try to get him to consult on your own life exhibit yeah mm -hmm. well maybe he sees some inspiration there and can help me with my <laughs> i think so <laughs> your your commodities yeah. of rebecca <laughs> my future exhibit in neon <laughs> are any of his works or are there anything of his that will be for sale oh no the book the book yeah the catalog <laughs> is for sale okay and we would appreciate you um Purchasing that <laughs> when you come to view the exhibit mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it supports more exhibits. So yeah. the other and thing more education about the catalog, um, because we have been honored to be gifted one of the other catalogs of an exhibit that we're here. When the exhibits come down, the catalogs are still available for sale, are they not? Or is yes, it a limited run are. and then they're for sale until they're gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, and that's a unique way. I love it because then you get to Hold on to that exhibit mm -hmm. experience a little mm -hmm. bit more with additional information that if you don't get the opportunity to corner the artist <laughs> or the curator, um, that this then gives you the ability to do that. And remember yeah. things about it, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the catalogs, you know, have a lot of information, yes. yeah. you know, about the artist, their process, you know, what what the work means um, to them. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's a document. Yeah. Kind and of. It is. Document. It, it, yeah. it is a record of the a exhibition record, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's great about this uh, catalog that I will mention um, is the essayists in this catalog. Um, Gordon McConnell, who was a Governor's Arts Award winner, mm -hmm. um, celebrated artist. Um, Our governor? Yes. Okay. Art, cri um, art critic and art historian. And there is also an essay by Bonnie Lang Malcolmson, who was a former director at Paris Gibson Square oh, Museum of Art look at that. and is now curator of Northwest Art at the Portland Art Museum. Oh, my Ooh. gosh. Is yes. this catalog huh. something that the square puts together that you put together or is it something that goes with the exhibit and everybody gets an option at it? In this case, this catalog was put together by the originating institution. Okay. So it was put together by the Missoula Art Museum. Um, and so they prepared this in collaboration with the artist and the authors within mm. the okay. um, the catalog. And then it's distributed to all participating institutions so that the communities the exhibit goes mm -hmm. to have a chance to purchase a copy of the, nice. That's nice. Of the catalog. So wonderful. It's all full circle. Yeah. We're all connected. Yeah. We need to send a copy to Bonnie. She probably has a copy. She probably but has a copy. <laughs> well, you I don't know if she knows it's here, <laughs> you know, oh, so I should the, text her. Yeah, you, you should go. text yeah, her. I've been in touch with her. But she was a wonderful executive director mm -hmm. that um, people still talk about. Mm -hmm. I mean, she took the square over uh, in the, the 90s. Mm, it was late 80s, late early 80s. 90s, because mm -hmm. she did she like the one American and only. Compact. She <laughs> had <laughs> did. I mean, she came on board at the square when there was a big hole in the roof. Mm. Oh, yes. I mean, that's the perfect time to join yeah, a team. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the problem that you need to solve is pretty it's, evident. It's right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the place needed some work, and yeah. she raised, you know, they did a capital campaign yes. during her tenure and raised money to replace the roof. Wow. And so she, and replaced place the windows the mm -hmm. current windows there at the square so people yes. talk about her she's a lovely oh. lady lovely yeah. lovely mm -hmm. person and speaking of executive directors and full circle moments of that in the book um you will now be one that people talk about after your that's departure soon <laughs> yeah that's what they remember say. when we had sarah yeah. oh my God. Executive director. i told them when they get a new executive director don't do that to them <laughs> Say, well, it, Sarah did it right, this way. Right. You're like, anyway, I, I just tease. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, being at the square has just been a highlight of my career. And I've stated that and everything I'm sharing, you know, about my my move. But it's a yeah. step, you know, forward in my career. Mm -hmm. It's time. 
uh, I went to University of Montana to get my Master's of Fine Art. Mm -hmm. So I lived there for three years, and I've always loved it. It's an amazing art scene, um, and the Zoo Town Arts Community Center is where I'll be the executive director for that. So staying in the arts, I feel just yeah. really blessed. And I will always stay connected to the square and with mm -hmm. Nicole. I mean, Nicole mm -hmm. and I have built a wonderful relationship. Mm -hmm. I am working with her has been amazing. Mm -hmm. So we've been sad a yeah. little bit yes. over this, but... The team. <laughs> well, yeah. we're all a team. We really are. We've been a co-team since we both took on our positions at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. and that's, that's always been, tough. Because you know. it's not just... I've had those experiences where it's not just a, a working relationship. It's almost like a piece of your heart ends <laughs> up leaving and you're like, God, feels like we're breaking up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it well, was a tough forward. decision, a yeah. long decision. I, yeah. I just, how can I leave a place I care about so much? Yeah, that's, I think, yeah. the tough part, and but... Mm -hmm. I'm like thinking I'm hurting yeah. everyone or something, mm -hmm. and, and that's not the case. Yeah. But I also think but. it's... If you don't figure out when to cut ties to let kind of new leadership, new vision, new ideas come in, it becomes harder because then you become yeah. the old crusty stale person. <laughs> like, oh, no. That I don't want. No, no. This is like, 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 gonna be like too crusty <laughs> associated with you. No, exactly. No. no. <laughs> Folks, you really are going to have to meet Sarah to yeah, know how God, funny that really funny. is. Right. Like, <laughs> how my eyes got this yeah, exactly. big. I was like, no, God, that'd be horrible. You're like old and crusty. That is your motivation now to never be called that. <laughs> never. I think I don't know. I don't think it would ever be old and crusty. I just think it's the opportunity that most professionals within the museum feel. Mm -hmm. They decide that it's time to change cultural institutions and advance their careers in mm -hmm. some way, or change and move in a different direction. In some ways, Sarah's moving away from like the more like formalized like museum with a collection, for mm -hmm. example, and the stuff that we do to a more like eclectic, diverse, mm. energetic community center that mm. artists are really drawn to. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and that fits my personality. Yeah, <laughs> you know, really, <laughs> not only and so does the square yeah. always has. Yeah, you know, yeah, and but the and the square has its place because it provides a center of art. And it is a center for the com for the arts in our community. Yeah. It is a place where people can learn about art, make art. Those places don't exist really here in Great Falls that give you the full encompassment of mm. the diversity of art in the world, the diversity of perspectives, how to make different types of art in our studio art classes. You know, it has this exhibit, for example, is going to have a lecture series called Live in the Dream. Mm. Oh, yeah. And this lecture series is going to correlate to all those individuals who might not think that who love art or those who don't under are not a part of art, but like the historical perspectives from different professionals investigating the American identity from different mm. communities within Ooh. Montana. Latin Americans, Latinos, mm -hmm. Pakistani, Muslims, mm -hmm. um, Native. yeah, Native, Chris, Chris Latre is on mm. the list of speakers. Oh so my like, gosh. So like, what does it mean to live that American dream? Wow. From different perspectives. Because he, Willem, is from the Netherlands. He mm -hmm. is European and his perspective was diverse and different as well. And mm -hmm. that's what he's really wanting everybody to see. And the square is that we want to show that we bring so much to our community and are able to do that because of the hard work that our team does. Mm. Yes. That is that sounds like an yeah. really epic bow put mm -hmm. on this whole mm -hmm. one exhibit that encompasses so many different avenues, yeah. which is pretty powerful. And you know, well done. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna ask the that lecture series, when when are those happening? Um, we'll be sharing the schedule. They'll start in November okay. and move through January. Okay. And then we'll have some additional programming that will be added on throughout as well. Okay. Um, so look out for it. It's yeah. coming to you in the mail, in your constant, con in your member <laughs> mailing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's It'll right. be on ours. Yeah. Yes. Well, Become folks, if member. you're not members <laughs> and right. you do want to immerse yourself in this, sounds like you got multiple trips to come to Great Falls yeah, for. Because absolutely. when you get those opportunities to visit with other folks with their different perspectives, I think that just is so unique because mm -hmm. you're learning. I'm going to say it this way, but it's not necessarily true. Learning history from a different viewpoint mm -hmm. You know, uh, when we hosted the Berlin Airlift Veterans um, Association here, because we were the training grounds for the Berlin Airlift, you learned about those 
things in your history classes, but until you talk to the person that's gone through it and you get their take on what that experience was, history really comes alive and other people's viewpoints can come alive in a way that you would have never been able to get by reading a book or learning about it in a textbook or whatever it is. Because I'll tell you, when you get a 92 year old man to tell you about World <laughs> War II and then the mm -hmm. Berlin airlift in a, in a way that is reflective of the 20 year old kid that went through it, mm. it's pretty pretty interesting it's not stuffy or <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about getting drunk and i'm like oh that didn't show up in the u.s history book <laughs> <laughs> right mm -hmm. well it's the honest perspective oh, yeah. it's just and your knowledge base just grows yeah mm -hmm. you know you become uh you have more depth when yeah. you get to learn these things well and, and we can't all to. experience this stuff firsthand like you're not going to get right. to it's not like I can go back and relive World War II and be in that experience. Mm -hmm. Right. So hearing it from someone who did is pretty spectacular. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wanted to thank also Humanities Montana. Yes. So, you know, the square, all of us art institutions are tied into the larger institutions that support right. everything that we do. Montana Humanity, Arts Council. Yep. Mm -hmm. Humanities Montana and Montana Arts Council. What would we do without them? I know. Right. <laughs> we, and they research. I mean, they have appointed these speakers, and there's mm -hmm. a roster, and they make it really affordable to institutions yes. like us to be able to bring these uh, people in. Mm -hmm. And what people may not realize, you know, the reason we have membership and yes. all these things and free admission, it takes these organizations to help fund the square. Yes. These exhibits are expensive. Yeah, mm -hmm. they don't just come in. I mean, think about they the shipping of forty-eight up. crates mm -hmm. that are massive. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. What that cost alone? And the staff yeah. installation and time yeah. and work and it's time and everything. Free to come see these yes. exhibits. Yes. We do mm -hmm. accept donations. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> just gotta plug that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people be. forget. Yes. Don't even. You know, don't yeah. think much about it. But mm -hmm. you know, there are institutions. For instance, you know, is it the um, Metropolitan Museum of Art? Right. Mm -hmm. When you go there in New York, there is free admission. But when you go to the front desk. You ask, and they say, I don't even think they suggest a donation of $25. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. and I think it's that right. concept they can still of... still for free, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. they're still asking that. for that. Yeah. We would love to see what you think this exhibit is worth, so pay what you feel its right. yeah. value yes. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most people pay $800. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> this is a typical admission. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I think that is that concept of here, experience this. But based on what you've experienced now, what would your admission, what would you think you would pay to oh. be admitted to that? And yes. To that exhibit? Oh, yeah. I would probably say at least $25. I at agree. least. Yes. Every time you go to view it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So drop your donations and think of go. it as a post admission cost <laughs> post right and yeah. it just does go right back to the institution yes. and the to get more of those opportunities yeah. it's mm -hmm. a perfect mm -hmm. thing to do mm -hmm. oh i'm so excited I about know. this exhibit it's and we're cool. always looking for exhibit sponsors so mm -hmm. oh you know, i was thought yeah. you were going to say exhibit yeah. ideas i'm like oh, oh, oh i've got one got <laughs> <laughs> hey no, we like they don't to need listen help with that. ideas but we do have plenty i mean exhibit sponsors she books you know, our exhibits are booked about two years out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Typically. Yeah. And well, our, there are a variety of things. There are like the opportunities for touring exhibits. There are ones that I put together for my mm -hmm. own curatorial ideas and things. And then we host separate artists on their solo exhibits. So there's a, there's all kinds of different exhibits that happen at the square. Yeah. They, they change and there's, and there's the steadfast, the Lee Steen that everybody wants oh, to come yeah. and, I love and see. And I love Lee. Experience. I was just talking with someone about that exhibit that totally spacing on it. I think it was somebody who was visiting in town and they were talking about that oh, exhibit. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh -huh. I don't know if you've ladies have ever heard me lament about how amazing our restrooms are. Um, I would say they're the top tier <laughs> restrooms in oh. this in this community because a lot of people use them. Um, but what we've done is added things to read while you're utilizing those facilities since they are the premier feature of this building. And one of the one of the I'm going to call it an exhibit that we have in one of the stalls is focused on the Lee Steen exhibit. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! And so we drive people to come out of that restroom, and a lot of people do if they're mm -hmm. the right type of personality. They'll be like, 
hey, talk to me about the stick figures. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you betcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Rebecca. That's right. Yeah, so that's we drive wonderful. conversations here connected mm-hmm. to those things. And of course, since I created the exhibits, <laughs> um, <laughs> I got to pick what we talked mm-hmm. about. And so it's fun to see when people come in and they're like, because they would have never otherwise probably engaged in that thought mm-hmm. process to come up and go, stick figures tell huh? me about yeah. stick figures <laughs> you know what's happening mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. like, it is an amazing exhibit mm-hmm. but the other permanent exhibit that i love at the square is and i i call it wrong probably a lot but i call it the gene price dog tag exhibit <laughs> three thousand and counting okay yes that's the name of it that is it okay. mm-hmm. and it is about dog tags it is. Uh, it is about dog tags. It's. Okay. The, it's, it's about what the dog tags represent. Yeah, mm-hmm. three thousand and counting. So mm-hmm. the individuals who had them and now have passed. Yeah, mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. Operation Iraq. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, and that one doesn't take up a whole bunch of space, but I love the concept behind it. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, back on to any (laughs) other topic. I was just going to ask you as you reflect on your time, was it seven years? Yeah, a little over seven years. Um, Mm -hmm. What kind of sticks out to you? What is what's the legacy you hope you leave behind Mm -hmm. there um, or some of your kind of favorite things that? Well, I think some of my favorite, I mean, for me personally, is building this amazing team Mm -hmm. that we have. It's taken years in the making Mm -hmm. and it's solid yeah. and everybody's happy and everybody <laughs> yes. enjoys working mm. with one another. It's not mm. easy. No. It <laughs> isn't. And <laughs> it's, it's come together. And um, so that's, you know, some of it. So mm-hmm. it's just a pleasure. The colleagues are amazing to work with mm. and support the institution. We're all on the same page for the mission and the vision of the institution. Mm. And that's rare. Yeah. It is. Yeah, actually. And so that also just, um, Making, helping the status of the institution grow throughout the state of Montana. Mm -hmm. You know, institutions can ebb and flow up and down. And the square has had its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And I took it over when it was not, it was kind of in a down, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, still thriving. People love the the museum, but membership has grown. The budget for the institution has almost doubled and now sustaining itself. Um, And building improvements. So I just feel like, Driving mm-hmm. by it as well, yes. it shines brighter. Mm-hmm. And there's still a lot of work to do. Don't get me wrong. That historic sure. building is a lot of work. <laughs> and let me maintain. say, when you, t- I don't know how many people have even paid attention to it, but you undertook a huge effort to paint the windows on the square. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm thinking, oh, that'll be nice. Like just kind of a maintenance thing. And then when I saw the difference it made by just changing the paint color on the windows i would have never guessed that that small detail Mm -hmm. would have had such an impact on how much more beautiful that building was oh yeah well it's taken it from kind of this dungeness Mm -hmm. it's so (laughs) weird very historical it was very historical which is lovely (laughs) but i did talk to the (laughs) preservation officers and said you know do I have to stick with a specific color palette? And actually they said, no, you can paint them purple if you wanted to. The point is you need to paint the windows because the paint was peeling. <laughs> yes. It's, you know, right. damaging the wood. So at the end of the day, they just want to make sure that everything's sealed up. Mm-hmm. But there wasn't a requirement. Huh. And Nicole, for <laughs> months, paint them red. And I'm like, so I, in my brain, I think red like the color of our logo red. And I'm right. like, no way. <laughs> no, 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 no way. And so I picked all these different colors. Originally, yeah. I was thinking white. And, and then I'm torn, I'm torn, I'm torn. Went and bought all these paint samples. Everybody colors. was like brown, yellow, white. <laughs> no, no, brown, green, or and white. Yes. And, and I was stuff. like, no. And she <laughs> said, red, red, red. And I'm like, red. But her term of red and my red, I oh. just picked a color mm-hmm. that matched the... Um, the roof, roof. Mm-hmm. and then we all went outside and stood and back, like, and yes. I was like, "Yep, that's yeah. the color." <laughs> that yeah. And Nicole's like, "See, I was right. Uh-huh. I was right." She's like, "This is why I have my job that I do." Yeah, <laughs> but it looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. It does look and amazing. You mm-hmm. see the building. Yeah, mm-hmm. is what mm-hmm. the weird. It's huge, but many times people don't see it. But because yeah. of that, that brightness that comes mm-hmm. out of it, it's like, oh. It's Dang no it. longer it's right the gray yeah, that know? I see. It is the building itself Vibrancy. that I see. I'm so and glad. I, I don't, you would have, I just would have never guessed. 
Hmm. Painting the window would have done that. <laughs> Terracotta color. And, yes. you know, it trust me, when it was done, I'm like, I'm waiting for emails and phone calls to fly in. <laughs> like, what have you done? Yeah. What yeah. have you done? Mm-hmm. No, I've had yes. nothing but compliments. <laughs> yeah. Good. Not one person's made a negative comment on the color. Wow. And I'm mm-hmm. like, Whew. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But yeah, so that, and it, you know, just in general, the institution, like we did a lot of clean out. That place was yeah. a hoarded space yes. when I took mm-hmm. that over. And the clean grounds out. as well. And the grounds mm-hmm. and finally were able to, you know, raise enough money and keep mm-hmm. it sustained that we can hire a landscaping crew versus exactly. having random people cut the lawn. <laughs> that is nice. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's mm-hmm. just... It's a fun institution, and I know the community is really happy. We always yeah. need more community support. We do. Yeah. Docents. We are oh, on yeah. a call for docents right now. Oh. Yes. Docent training program. Mm. If you love art, love people, want to learn, want to share, it's for you. Yeah. You should come on Wednesdays Rebecca, at 1 o'clock. you could be a docent. Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. No, I no, could. It only takes an hour and a half. You would love it. Stosins need to stay focused and on topic. That's true. Yeah. That's I fair. think that's I fair. have proven after 200 <laughs> episodes that's not that's a skill not, set no. I have. Okay. Well, I don't know. If it's, it's about, about storytelling you know, yeah. and sharing. So, yeah, I think you I got it. I can do it. a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> I actually think you would be really People good. People would end the tour and be like, I wonder if she knows anything about the exhibits. <laughs> She's and been talking a lot. You want to see my compact? Yeah. That's what the third grader will take uh-huh. away. The teacher said she had a compact. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't know what that is, but she talked about it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there I've had go. such a blast yeah, and I'm so thank you. I don't thank you. I don't know how else to get you the listener more excited yeah. about this exhibit. Um I wish you know what? I think Shannon you could take a picture of yeah. uh some of the stuff in the catalog to really hit home because I don't think doing it justice is uh me telling you about an outline <laughs> of a neon kid. Right. Right. You know, those are the kind of things where it's yeah. like you have to see it. There's so much dimension to these mm-hmm. um this mm-hmm. exhibit that you're not expecting that yeah. is going to be blowing you away mm-hmm. that you're going to want to do this. And then I say, I mean, the exhibit's open now. Yeah. Like, God oh, dang, if you don't have plans for October 25th, yeah. 6th weekend in Great Falls, make them now. Yeah. Yes. Because this is a really unique experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about anybody else, but I've heard a theme in my life in the last couple of months about storytelling. I've been mm-hmm. a lot of storytelling topics that have mm. been coming my way. So obviously the universe is telling me, hey, engage in some storytelling topics. There you go. Topics. Yeah. There you it's go. getting through to you. Refine, <laughs> refine your abilities mm-hmm. so you can stay focused and on topic. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you know, be a dose. Yeah. Montanans love to tell stories. Yes. They do. I mean, mm-hmm. they really do. People live in nostalgic Yes. places in their mind mm-hmm. often and and it's very rare you can go somewhere and meet somebody that doesn't want to tell you something <laughs> yeah, very about true. their <laughs> life uh-huh. Bro- brother cousins and uncles and all of it we get that with the with many guests who walk in you hear their life story <laughs> yeah and, and, and you just, just you just wonder what i've often wondered what is it about me that makes you think i want to listen about Whatever it is you're telling me. <laughs> like, uh, it's yeah. the headset. Mm-hmm. Anyway. It's the I'm headset. sorry. I should have brought that topic up. But I'm like, people love stories here. Yeah. So yeah. come hear mm-hmm. another one. Yeah. That'll hear be more impactful stories. Mm-hmm. in your life, actually. And I yeah. think many people will be able to relate to it. And we've met quite a few people here in Great Falls that are just, well, one of them, you know, um, Matthias. Oh, yes. Yoga. He just got a citizenship. Yeah. And I've mm-hmm. told him about this exhibit. And I hope he comes and shares yeah. his perspective on what yes. that has meant to him. Yeah. You know, and also Christina Roth, who was yes. had an exhibit during COVID at the mm-hmm. square. Mm-hmm. She shared her experience because she became a U.S. citizen in 2016. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And what oh. that's meant to her. It's been interesting yeah. meeting these people and, and really loving to be an American. Yes, mm. exactly. That's neat. And I think it's a beautiful time to remember those good things as we are <laughs> nearing couldn't be election more better time. and craziness and all of that. It's a good um, overlay to You're, that's some a really that. good so, point. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's focus in on the good stuff. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, something happy and positive and beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks for making that the bright spot in the world. Yeah. 
spots. Literally and figuratively. Yeah, right. Neon brown. Neon brown. Right. Exactly. Bright spot. <laughs> so excited. Yeah. And thank you, Sarah, for your time here. And we best wishes thank to you, you so much. in Missoula. Thank yeah. you. Nicole, I can't wait to see what the next yes. exhibit is. Yes. Um, so <laughs> open door. Come now. Next well, time. You can tell them about the sculpture that's going to be installed soon. So that'll give people a little bit a of little a taste. taste. Right. I was going to say something when we were talking about the outside of the building is a yeah. lot of the things that we did, too, was to bring attention to the grounds and bringing in more mm. sculpture Con to the mm. front, the north the side of the building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have it in the south. We need it in the north. So mm. Robert Harrison began that process. Mm. And now we have another outstanding sculpture being going to be installed in the, on the north side ish of the building <laughs> northwest, northwest right northwest. yes mm -hmm. and uh it is from a ukrainian artist who was a fellow oh. uh a resident at the archie bray and she is a big deal mm. yanina miranova <clears throat> and it is about a nine foot tall sculpture <gasps> of a figure of a figure a person. and it cool. is it's colorful and quirky and it's and she titled it "Meet Me in Montana." Oh, <laughs> cool! Oh, I yeah. can't wait to see it. Yeah. Uh huh. So, well, know, I think so this welcoming. is the beginning yeah. of one of my dreams, Nicole. That I don't know if I've shared with you, but here <laughs> we go. Please watch out. <laughs> watch out. <Yeah. laughs> well, with a nine foot sculpture in the I'm going to call it the park of the Paris Gibson <laughs> Square, yes. I have a dream that we put in signature sculptures in every one of the parks in our city all 57 of them mm -hmm. yeah so um i will talk with you <laughs> incessantly <laughs> about this dream of how we can make it happen and one day it is really just about finding the money and then yes. figuring out how to make it happen because yeah. i know there's artists out there and we can make this a go but it's the cost associated with that so mm -hmm. well there's no way that it can't be any different than the way the mural program works Yep, there I've got go. some ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. So um, one day in the future, yes. people, you heard it here first. Mm -hmm. If we have <laughs> sculptures throughout our city That's in every right. city park, it's because of me. <laughs> 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 That's a lie. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can thank Nicole for bringing one to. Yeah, thank you for starting start, the project. Start it off. Yeah, <laughs> just kick it off. Well, yeah. we've also You're got welcome. we've got the new elk or moose in Tourist elk. Park. Yes, elk. So. it's very cool. The funny mm -hmm. thing is that when I first drove by, in my brain I was like. Has that always been there? It's, you know, one of those things where you're like, wait a second, has that always been there? And then it was a nice warm day, so I had the windows down. The car behind me had a dog that was <laughs> owned in on it, like, <laughs> like going crazy out the window. Oh and I gosh. thought it was funny because that dog was like, what is that? <laughs> it's, a, it's a real animal. Oh I just thought it was gosh. funny because I was doing the double take and then the dog where? was like... <sighs> Um, it's it's right, right by the you know, water park. Yes. Yep. Oh, you know where okay. Rain Buffalo kind of is? From a yes. Woman, like Kitty Corner. Kitty Corner from Rain oh, Buffalo. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's kind of we'll disguised in the woods, which is why you might do like a. Right. Wait, was is he, he a bronze there? piece? Mm -hmm. um, well, do you know, cast bronze. I don't like, like a like a, a see through black bronze, oh. like metal. Um, I didn't look too close. Like to a it. mesh, like oh. a kind of like a Jay Labor statue where it's all formed, mm -hmm. but okay. it's like strips Hollow of on the inside. metal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's really a unique it. piece, yeah. and I was like, oh yes, my dream is coming true. I have nothing to do with it, but I keep spreading the word. Well, you you. What is it? Manifested? There we go. People, yeah. mm -hmm. Just send it into the universe and go. hopefully people catch it and do it. It's working. <laughs> Obviously it's working. Yeah, it's working. The tourist park. We're doing it. S the square. Yeah. Yeah. And Sarah has a sculpture as well oh, here. I do. Right oh, along I do. The water. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Athena. Mm -hmm. My Athena. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so a solid bronze piece. Yeah. That was lovely yeah. to have that That West Bank so. Park. Mm -hmm. West Bank Park, right yes. next to the kayak. Your kayak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's a nice little area. Yeah. There. It's a beautiful oh, spot. I just did <laughs> the, the, se the segment that will be in the past now when this comes out. But when we're doing this tomorrow mornings, we do a segment called Great Things and Great Falls on oh. Wake Up Montana around the state. And it was in the background of that. Your, oh, was it? Your oh, sculpture. how cool is that? So, there Thanks, lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she finds all the cool spots. There you go. There so you next goes. one you can do in front of Meet Me in Montana. Yes. When Do is it. when is when is that going up? Well, our hope is by the end of this month. Okay. Oh, wonderful. If not, it might have to wait till June. Okay. 
Yeah. Because that of makes well, sense whenever it goes up, we can, we'll do, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll show it. We'll yeah. show it whenever it happens. And it's ceramic yes. too. It's oh, a nice. mm-hmm. And just as a precursor to this discussion, not a precursor, a continuation <laughs> of this discussion, <laughs> there'll be an exhibit of her work at the square. Neat. Oh, Very neat. she'll be, um, she'll be coming. Awesome. Well, so that's this winter. This winter yeah. in February. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would say, Nicole, the door is always open for you to come and talk about the upcoming exhibits mm-hmm. or when exhibits launch. But technically, the door will be closed because that's how we record. So <laughs> no. the door will always close for you when you want to come and talk about exhibits. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. We very close good. the door for yeah. podcasts. That's right. Studio. I get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so funny. She's so proud of herself for that. <laughs> yeah. Look at you. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that one for no reason at all. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you both. Spending your yes. time with us and, and creating amazing things for mm-hmm. people to experience. And folks, I don't I can't express it enough. Get here mm-hmm. October 25th and 6th. Do this exhibit. Experience that and the rest of Great Falls along with the artist reception and the free workshop. It's going to be a blast. Mm-hmm. I'll see you there. Good. And if Learning you need your stories telling. Come. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and until we see your bright, smiling, happy, healthy, wonderful face in our fair city, we do hope you are creating amazing memories with your friends and family, wherever you might be. We'll see you soon. We are no damn experts, as the recorded claims from Great Falls, Montana, covering what you need to know about this amazing damn town. Damn, that felt good.